Good morning to everybody in Australia. Good afternoon to everybody in New Zealand. We will be starting this webinar in just a minute or so. So please uh, be ready and we have our presenter, Mark Hay, ready to go. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more attendees and um, look forward to sharing this webinar with you shortly. Thank you. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for this webinar. My name is Mason Allington, the Marketing Coordinator at Connecting Up and TechSoup New Zealand. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar about Office 365 Security and Antivirus, which is a free webinar sponsored kindly by ESET and Microbe. This will be presented by Mark Kay, who is from our partner Microbe, the people behind providing ESET to the not-for-profit community. Just a bit of housekeeping to start with, if you have a question during the webinar, please type it in the question box on your webinar panel and Mark will answer the questions at the end of the session. Uh, if you have any technical issues during the webinar, please also type it in the question box and I will do my best to help you with it while the webinar is in progress. The session is being recorded and a link to the recording and a copy of the slides will be sent to you uh, shortly after the webinar in the next day or two. That's all from me in form of introduction. Mark, I'll hand over to you. Thanks very much, uh, Nathan. I appreciate that. And welcome to everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Mark Hay. I'm from Microbe, uh, ESET's Platinum Distributor in Australia. And no, that's not a photo of me on the slide that's showing. ESET I'll tell you a bit about ESET. ESET is a world leading software security company specialising in antivirus technology. Micro distribute ESET antivirus security to a broad channel of computer resellers and their customers and we support connecting up clients with not for profit discount pricing. Today I'd like to discuss the latest threats and attacks that demonstrate why even if you move to Office 365 you still need strong antivirus protection on your local network and devices. It is a fact that cloud-based applications such as Office 365 are becoming increasingly popular, so we want to dismiss some of the common misconceptions that cloud solutions offer in sufficient inherent security. I'd like to give you a quick overview of ESET's history. ESET was established in Slovakia in 1992 and has over 1,200 employees now worldwide. They have partners in 180 countries with research and development centres across eight countries. ESET only came to Australia in 2015 and now has offices in Sydney and Melbourne with expansion plans nationally and they have a fully staffed Sydney based dedicated support centre. These are some of the more well known companies that ESET is protecting already here in Australia. 
Internationally, ESET is one of the world's leading antivirus vendors and has won more of the highly respected Virus Bulletin 100 awards than any other AV vendor. This graph illustrates their success against the world's leading brands since 1998. Okay, here are the agenda items that we will cover in today's webinar. First up is a brief overview of Office 365. We will then take a look at exactly what your computer is connected to and clarify the vectors that you need to protect. We will then elaborate on some of the common misconceptions surrounding Office 365 and its security. And we will discuss some of the latest cyber threats and advise on how to defend against them. Office 365 is the new way Microsoft wants you to buy Office. You can choose to run Office 365 just from the cloud using your internet connection, or you can install Office applications on your local computer or portable device and store your data in the cloud. Or you can do what most companies do, which is to run Outlook from the cloud and install the other Office applications on their local desktop and store the data files locally still, either on the desktop or on your company file server. The flexibility that Office 365 grants you is terrific, but with this flexibility comes the need to continue to think about how you need to protect your data and your network from both infection and intrusion. So the question, is Office 365 insecure? Well, not entirely. Microsoft have gone to great lengths to provide security in the cloud, but this will not protect your local devices and the reaction time to new threats may not be as good as you would like it to be. Spam filtering and virus protection are enabled on all inbound and outbound email messages with Office 365. And while this will filter known antivirus threats, unfortunately 90% of today's most dangerous malware is unknown and comes in the form of what is known as a zero day attack where the, the threat is, is literally unknown and reaction is the only way and the quickest reaction is the only way to protect against it. I'll, we'll go into more on this later. However, every organization needs to protect itself against these latest unknown threats, which include new versions of ransomware and botnet infections. So what is your computer connected to? Many users who boot up their computer every day and start working don't realise exactly how they connect to the internet and who else is connected to their network. In this section we'll run through what a network looks like, which will help later in the session to understand your network's points of weakness. This diagram illustrates what a typical company network looks like. This may seem to be a complex diagram, but it's actually quite simple if we break it down into three sections. So Let's do that now. First up are the devices that you use to connect to your network. Your computer, your phone, or even a tablet. You may connect via a patch lead or over the wireless network if you have one. The concept is the same. So these devices are known in the industry as endpoints. Let's move up one level. These are your file servers and mail servers that traditionally store your files and process your Outlook mail. You may have a separate mail server and a network switch and router which is connecting you to the internet. Some organizations do not use servers but simply have their desktops that use or laptops that use a router to connect the, their devices to the internet. Now the cloud slash Office 365. Microsoft use a data center known as Azure. So this is where they host 
the applications for Office 365 and the Exchange server for Office 365. This is what you will connect to when you are running Office 365 and sometimes your data can be stored and processed also in the Azure Data Center. Although as mentioned earlier, most people are tending to still save their data locally. Okay, so the data that's saved locally cannot be protected by Microsoft security and needs to be considered still to be part of what you need to protect. If you do not protect it and it's stored locally and you do not back it up, you are very vulnerable to hacker and malware attacks. Viruses and malware can and will infect and damage your company devices. Once infected, you may then unknowingly retransmit the infection both to your contacts and possibly your own clients. So if your computer or phone becomes infected by malware, the entire network can also be compromised, meaning someone could obtain a login and access and steal company data. So Office 365 security will not stop all the latest ransomware, which is one of the biggest threats that we all now face on a daily basis. Ransomware is transmitted by email attachments and is crafted with socially engineered expertise. The message and attachments look genuine and are opened by uh, recipients in total innocence, thinking that this is a genuine attachment that they need to look at. The cyber criminal has succeeded and may now gain access to company data and most of these attacks end up in the data being encrypted. They lock your data files and demand that a ransom be paid before they will send, allegedly send a password to decrypt them. The average ransom starts at 450 Australian dollars and even when paid to the cyber criminals, on average, only 40% of people who pay the ransom end up with a genuine password that will decrypt their data. Ransomware is run by cyber criminals. It's big business and it was very successful in 2016 and 2017, because of the success, 2017 is going to see a, a significant increase in these sophisticated attacks. Another point of entry for malware into the network will, is USB drives. These often can carry viruses and spyware. The owner of the USB is likely to be completely unaware that it's infected and has received the infection by downloading files from other computers or even the internet. And they can innocently infect a company network by simply plugging this into one of the computers attached to the network. Um, the USB is still a big threat. I was recently at a big Australian security conference where one of the leading telcos was handing out promotional USB sticks. So when I plugged their USB stick into my laptop, he said antivirus immediately detected it was loaded with a dangerous virus and put out the warning, which I let them know about straight away. Okay, when you connect to unsecured Wi-Fi, Examples are cafes, restaurants, airports, hotels, conferences. You're potentially going to be giving direct access to your computer or your phone. Imagine it's like someone is looking over your shoulder whilst you enter your banking passwords. This is what the same effect is if you're on an unsecured network. Uh, there could be someone just waiting for you to log in and then watch you entering your passwords and be able to access your bank. So these are some of the main threats to devices and now we'll move up and have a look at threats to your server infrastructure. Does your server infrastructure still exist or have you actually replaced it with Office 365. If you haven't replaced it, 
which most haven't and maintain a file server at the least, um, how are you protecting and screening for malware? If you're already using Office 365 for mail but storing data locally on your file server, you need to protect it. One of the greatest ways to protect it is actually ensuring you have a very sophisticated antivirus solution on it and also ensuring that you have backups that are tested. It's, uh, so many people are, are using what they believe is effective backup and when until a disaster occurs and they need to restore, they, uh, they don't test it and they often find out that that backup has been failing for some time and they, can, they are now into a serious downtime situation. So please test your backups. Okay, so that's devices and servers. Now it's time to have a look at Office 365 and talk about some of the common misconceptions that we have found. Misconception number one, if I have Office 365, I don't need antivirus. Well, as we've discussed, this is just not true. Most companies are, as I said, still storing files locally. Uh, the cloud-based email and data of 365 are protected by Microsoft security. Um, this doesn't mean that when you are actually saving attachments that are not picked up as malware onto your local computers, it does not mean that you're protected. So as we've discussed, several points of entry to your local computer which cannot be protected by Office 365 security. Misconception number two, Office 365 comes with spam and virus protection so my computer is safe. Yes. Microsoft Exchange Online Protection helps combat malware in your email messaging environment. However, it doesn't protect your device from other threats. In 2016, there was over a million new threats worldwide every day. This is the, actually works out to be 41,666 new threats released worldwide per hour. The response time for real-time threats in Office 365 security is approximately two hours. This is actually a huge window of opportunity for malware to strike. Leading antivirus companies such as ESET are releasing solutions to stop these new threats in an average time of only 8 to 12 minutes. Um, Microsoft have actually, in reaction to response to their inherent security, have released an optional upgrade to their Office 365 security. Now, this is known as advanced threat protection and it's available as an enhanced security but at additional cost. Misconception number three, Microsoft security products are top performers. Well, it's fair to say that Microsoft has had a checkered history when it comes to security of their products. This slide demonstrates the performance of Microsoft security essentials against leading antivirus vendors during 2016. Diagram one on the left is comparing proactive detection of newly released threats and diagram two indicates the three award levels that have been awarded by a respected group known as AV comparators who put the leading AV products to the test annually. You can see down the bottom that Microsoft are in the standard category um, some other big names like Trend are in the advanced category and some of the bigger names, again, such as ESET, were awarded the advanced plus uh, category. 
this is December 2016, so we're talking very recent. Uh, ESET laboratories are constantly analysing and studying how cyber criminals propagate their threats all over the world. The five threats that every company needs to pay attention to are things that we'll go into more detail in a minute. Every day ESET receives uh, thousands of malicious codes that are created for a variety of purposes, or all are malicious. Some are aimed at home users while others are targeting and attacking the business world. The majority of these attacks are effective against small business due to lax policies on security of the network. So we'll take a look at the most common threats facing companies, their impact and some significant recent cases. We'll also outline how to best defend your company network and devices. Okay, number one, ransomware. I've talked about it already, but I need to, I feel I need to ensure that, it, that you're aware of some of the different ways that it works. It's one of the most frustrating threats facing large, medium, small companies across the globe. It leaves organisations' vulnerable points exposed. Uh, they can, after, after you've become infected with ransomware, not only can it encrypt your software, that the criminals can also um, put in what is called a backdoor, which allows them continued access into your network. Uh, these are things that, that need to be treated and eliminated to secure your network once again. You need to, um, whether you perform configuration of antivirus solutions or undergo frequent security reviews, an attack of this kind means the very continuation of your business is under threat. Any company seeking to implement a proactive security policy obviously will try to avoid any kind of infection, but it's almost impossible to completely protect against. So when things do occur, your damage recovery tools are of vital importance. Before any ransomware infection occurs in a company, the time needed to obtain a backup of the information and get the business up and running again is key to minimising the impact. Again, ensure you have a backup system in place tested on a regular basis. Email has a pivotal role in companies today. We just can't live without it. It's a core part of communication with customers, providers, obtaining services. It also enables workers to share information within the company. Corporate email accounts are definitely one of the main channels for receiving malicious code. One of the most recent email threats was Win32 Bayrob. This was spread in separate waves, masquerading as different coupons, including Amazon. Another example being received through attachments and currently creating huge problems is known as CTB Locker. Uh, this is a crypto locker. Its payload spreads a Trojan, which ESET picks up as Win32 Trojan Downloader and install, if not detected, it will install ransomware, encrypting your files, demanding ransoms once again. So to, to protect corporate email accounts, you need to consider both an endpoint security solution that will detect malicious attachments that may get through the mail scanning of any mail server, including Office 365. The endpoint can often pick up things that get through. So Filter these elements before they're opened by your end users. Okay. The use of USB memory sticks and other types of external devices are very common in the spread of malicious code. In a lot of not-for-profit companies, we're aware that the one of the easiest ways for volunteers to transfer information um, to the to the not-for-profit network is via USB sticks. The main method of this type of infection is known as the abuse of direct access links. 
This means what happens when the USB is connected to an infected computer, all the files and directories on the USB disappear and are replaced by direct access links. If that same USB device is then inserted into another computer and the user clicks on these links to access the information, they run the virus and infect the system and the folders do open so the victim doesn't even realise what they've just done and what's been done to the company. One of the points that we want to make is it's important that organisations set out usage policies for any of these external digital storage devices, whether they be USBs or external hard drives. They can pave the way, besides infecting the network, they also pave the way for information theft. These are two of the biggest threats that occur as a result of external USB storage devices or hard drives. Depending on the business or the decisions taken by the organisation, using a solution that enables the selective blocking of these devices is highly recommended. Okay, number four, exploits. Exploits can be a can be uh, created as a result of a number of different things. It can be created by the transmission of malware, which opens up a hole in the network, such as the back door we mentioned earlier, allowing criminals then to secretly come into your network. But trusted software also can have inherent vulnerabilities that aren't discovered at the time of release. Things like office applications, uh, browsers and websites. The challenge regarding flaws in applications or browsers is that if users fail to update when, when the vulnerability is exposed and made public or where there is no patch yet, you become exposed to threats. And the, crims, the criminals know that the threats exist and they look for unpatched software in order to take advantage of accessing your network. It's like leaving your front door wide open for someone to just come in. Two main types of these vulnerabilities exist. Those that are known and those that have not yet been discovered. When a vulnerability is known, you can take steps to prevent the attack. Unknown vulnerabilities, on the other hand, have not been reported and even the developers of the programs themselves are unaware that they are there. The criminals often will find them before the developers themselves. So until they are discovered by the developers, they cannot be patched and users are at great risk of attack. This is where anti-malware solutions come into play and protect you against as yet largely undiscovered attacks and exploits. They don't threaten just the endpoint either. The web servers and other devices directly connected to the internet are subject to exploit attacks. So to combat this type of threat, we need proactive security solutions with functionality such as ESET's exploit blocker. This is just one of the intelligent applications built into every ESET antivirus product. These applications help to prevent the execution of exploits and protect users from as yet undiscovered vulnerabilities in their trusted applications. Unprotected mobile devices. <coughs> this is a big one. It's a great concern to companies. The employees' mobile devices are unknown in terms of what security is in them what threats are in them. So if we take into account that these devices connect to the same network as your own company computers and are not usually protected, they are a serious weak point for attack, which will open the doors to information leaks or transmission of malware. Protecting the mobile device not only protects against infection by malicious code, but also helps to continue to protect the company's internal network once they're connected into it. In relation to this, ESET's central management tool allows mobile devices to be managed from a single console for all the endpoints. 
considering the number of not-for-profits who definitely will allow BYOD, which is bring your own device, and plug it into the network, we can't stress enough the importance of having effective policies for these mobile devices and having clear rules governing the use of smartphones within the network. So what can you do to better protect your network? Well, the, the challenge for company security is to protect the organisation, ensuring that no equipment in the network is infected and in the event that if an infection does arise that they can respond as quickly as possible and minimise the impact on the business. This is a difficult challenge, but it's not impossible if we take the decision to confront it proactively. A good starting point would be to know which threats an organisation will suffer the most harm from. This may take some time to achieve but understanding what detections are made by the security solutions on a day-to-day -day basis will help bolster a support plan to run alongside and develop the company's security policies. Taken together, this will help to keep the business and above all the business's information safe. ESET's leading edge technology products add multiple layers of security to help you protect both your incoming mail and your network devices. Static signatures are the standard method of reaction to the latest threats. ESET release their standard signature updates multiple times a day. They also have smart DNA signatures which are generated automatically by ESET antivirus as the program proactively detects attempted threats. Algorithmic detection seeks to match the behaviour found during everyday use of the internet and develops protection against newly discovered web-based threats. ESET also have what is called LiveGrid. It utilises data that ESET users are submitting worldwide as a, as a default within the program itself. These, this data is sent to ESET's virus lab where the specialists use the information to build an accurate snapshot of the nature and scope of global threats. They then release relevant updates to the virus signature database which keeps ESET adaptive to the latest threats. ESET live grid technology is it's used in all of ESET's antivirus products globally. This is a, a very interesting slide which I'll spend a little bit of time on. Um, it looks a little complex to start with but what you will find is uh, it's, it's a, a description of the, the way that threats can enter a network and the way good software such as ESET has layers of protection to put a stop to the threat and the threats are becoming increasingly sophisticated so there has to be in a security product layers of protection. So uh, the network attack protection is the first layer that ESET will use against uh, a threat that's attempting to enter the, the computer or network. Um, level one, so it's an extension of a firewall technology. It improves the detection of known vulnerabilities at the network entry level. By implementing detection for common vulnerabilities in widely used protocols, um, the simple mail product protocol, which is known commonly as SMP, the remote procedure call, RPC, and remote desktop protocol, RDP, which is commonly used to remote into uh, your company network. This constitutes an important layer of protection against spreading malware. Network conducted attacks and exploitation of vulnerabilities uh, for which a patch has not been released or deployed will be stopped at this level. However, cyber criminals are clever and they're constantly seeking to outwit the antivirus companies. So let's let's 
have a look what happens if the threat moves across. He has the next layer of protection known as reputation and cache. Sorry. Um, okay, this layer inspects an object such as a file or URL before any scanning takes place. So our product checks the local cache and the shared case in the case of uh, endpoint security for known malicious or whitelisted benign objects. This improves our scanning performance. Afterwards, the ESET Live Grid reputation system will be then queried for object reputation. As in, has this object been seen elsewhere? Has it been classified as malicious somewhere else? Um, if it's in the live grid anywhere, this will then provide the protection layer here. It improves the scanning efficiency and enables faster sharing of malware intelligence with the entire ESET customer world. Uh, it'll apply URL blacklists so that dangerous websites are stopped and check the reputation preventing users from accessing sites or either containing malicious content or containing what's known as phishing tools. Uh, the pattern matching used by old school antivirus products can be bypassed easily by simple modification of the code or obfuscation techniques. However, the behavior of objects cannot be changed so easily. So ESET have developed DNA signatures which are precisely designed to take advantage of the principle. ESET perform deep analysis of code, extracting the genes that are responsible for the code's behavior. A single well-crafted DNA signature can detect tens of thousands of related malware variants. So as the cyber criminals seek to change their code, uh, the DNA signature detection recognizes that that code is very similar to code that was already in the wild as malware. And so the DNA signature protection says, no, let's have a closer look at that. If the threat has managed to defeat the initial layers of protection, it will execute. And at this point, ESET's exploit blocker adds another layer of protection. One step closer to the attackers by using a technology completely different from detection techniques that focus on analyzing malicious code itself. Typically, attackers will utilize exploits to gain access to your computer so they can further compromise the network. Exploit Blocker monitors the typically exploitable applications, your browsers, your document readers, your email clients, Flash, Java, all of these are trusted applications. ESET Exploit Blocker will monitor them and instead of just aiming at particular identifiers, it focuses on the explo not exploitation techniques that will be used against these trusted applications. Each exploit is an anomaly in the execution of the process and we look for anomalies that suggest the presence of exploitation techniques. The Advanced Memory Scanner, it's a unique to ESET technology. It effectively addresses an important issue of modern malware the heavy use of obfuscation and or encryption, whether checking is done using an emulator or by virtual physical sandboxing, there is no guarantee that during analysis the malware will display malicious behavior. So Advanced Memory Scanner monitors the behavior of a potentially malicious process, scans it and decloaks it in memory. This complements the more traditional functionality of pre-execution or on-execution proactive code analysis. So we identify exactly which process or module is responsible for the malicious communication. We take action against the identified object and sometimes these objects allow communications encryption to be bypassed. So the ESET network signatures are specifically designed to target network vulnerabilities, exploit kits 
and communication by advanced malware. The cloud malware protection system is one of several technologies based on ESET's cloud-based system, ESET LiveGrid. Here the samples collected are subject to automatic sandboxing, which means sandboxing is taking them out of the actual uh, live data situation and studying their behavior, uh, analyzing it, and this results in the creation of automated signatures if malicious characteristics are confirmed. You will learn about the ESET clients will learn about the automated detections via the ESET live grid reputation system without the need to wait for the next signature database update. The ESET's automated database update is typically under 20 minutes from detection of a new exploit. Okay. If you feel you need additional or better antivirus protection on your devices, we highly recommend that you contact Connecting Up and have a look at ESET's wide variety of products that are available under their discounts program. Connecting Up is also offering a free 90 day trial of selected ESET products. Thanks very much for, for listening in. Uh, this does conclude our webinar. We will take as many questions as we can. Please feel free to ask anything you need clarification on. We'll do our best to answer in the limited time available and if necessary we can escalate your questions to ESET's technical team and reply to you in due course. Thank you. Cool, thank you very much Mark. Um, so feel free if you have questions to, as Mark said, to, happy to answer as many questions as possible. We've got about 20 minutes left in the allotted time uh, and depending on the number of questions we'll see how we go. Um, so please post those questions in the questions box on your webinar panel. Uh, so the first question from David, just asking about Mac, Apple Mac computers, uh, are they still safe against uh, the types of attacks you were talking about? Absolutely, uh, Apple is in the same boat as as all of us uh, with Windows-based PCs. In fact, a lot a lot of Apple Macs are being run as Windows-based PCs in networks in companies today. So, so uh, a lot of the time, even though they're an Apple brand, they're still actually uh, running Windows software. But Apple are now absolutely. Um, on the same list as as targets as the Windows computers traditionally have been. Um, the, the the fact that their operating system is is not public source, not open source available to the public, means that it's harder to infect a Mac. But they will still take and transmit all of the current viruses and malware that are out there. So even if it doesn't directly affect the Mac user himself he's still going to be transmitting all the latest releases of viruses. That's an interesting point, Mark. I'm just um, adding my thoughts to a question. That's not something I particularly thought about as a personal Mac user and using Windows at work. So um, it, it's saying, and it's something I hadn't really thought about before, that it might not particularly affect the, the machine, but um, so ESET software or antivirus can help catch it on a Mac computer before it gets transmitted or passed around um, because yep. Macs are at risk of doing that. Exactly. Yeah, cool. Um, that, that's a, a good one. And um, I, I think just adding an opinion in, in course of the prevalence of the quantity of Mac computers around um, while historically that might have been considered safe and secure, I, I do know in the last year or two there have been a couple of particular breaches and the reward for anybody that does do it, and there's, there's a big incentive or a big carrot there to, to try and crack and get onto the Mac platform and uh, cause havoc there. So while the history might have been good, um, it, it, we're only, it could only be a few minutes away from something happening to, to the Mac system. 
That's right. And with the ESET products, there are multi-device products available, which are very affordable. So, so it means that you can protect your Mac, your Windows-based PCs, um, also phones. Uh, phones are very much often overlooked as as a real source of uh, uh, malware and and e exploit entry to the network. We all go into work and plug our phone into our USB port. That that can be enough to have it um, infect the network. Wow, there you go. Um, so a question from Sean: And how long does a scan take? Okay, it depends on the amount of data that that you're going to be scanning. Um, so that 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 definitely is is subjective. The the uh, the point here, though, is that the initial scan may take uh, will will actually take a lot lot longer um, than your subsequent scans because the initial scan does a deep scan on every single aspect of the computer, um, probably averaging half to a full hour um, on your average PC. Uh, once that's done though, as I said, the next uh, scan will be a cumulative scan looking for changes and it's uh, going to be done in a fraction of that time. Cool, and just a follow up question from Sean as well. Uh, how large is the footprint of ESET installed on a PC? Okay, I can't, I can't tell you what shoe size it is, but it's, it's definitely <laughs> a lightweight product. Uh, ESET, in fact, was famous um, in, a, in its early release uh, against all other antivirus products as being the lightest and coming with that formidable reputation that it has for, for successive um, BB100 tests against all the other products. Even though it was the lightest weight, it was the one that caught consistently every in the wild virus, test after test after test. Cool. I've got a question from Glenn in regards to licensing, um, and can you? And it might be quite specific, but we'll see how we go. Can you suggest a recommended ESET license setup for the following: one server holding file and email, and twelve PCs. And then yeah, I think right. it's a separate one: no, no servers, Office 365, and 12 PC. So I think there's two alternatives: uh, one server, Office holding file and email, plus 12 PCs, or no servers, Office 365, and 12 PCs. Yeah. In the first scenario, is there a, a, an Exchange server? Do you know? I don't have that there, but Glenn just wrote yes. There is yes. an exchange server. Okay. Okay, and then in the second scenario, they're looking at what they need if they're moving the exchange server into Office 365. Yep. Yes. So, yep. in 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 the first scenario, they will need um, endpoint secure business, endpoint and that will give business. them that will give them mail protection on the exchange server that's they're hosting locally as well as the endpoints and their file server. And in the second scenario where he's moving to Office 365, the product that we recommend is ESET's Endpoint Advanced. ESET Endpoint Advanced, cool, very good. Uh, I will just take the opportunity to point out, Mark mentioned the free 90 day trial that's available for Australian uh, viewers of the webinar from our Connecting Up site. Um, we're exploring whether we might be able to supply it to New Zealand currently, but uh, it's currently just available for our Australian audience. Um, in that uh, request for the trial, there is just a basic form that would just ask you to list how many computers or PCs, uh, servers you might be protecting, and then that gets passed directly on to our ESET and micro team to then recommend the right um, option for you. So. Uh, th that sort of question that Glenn asked is a really good one. And so if there's anybody else with a similar setup or would like to take advantage of that trial, please, um, we, we'll send out a link with the email that goes out with the slides and the recording and you can take advantage of that trial and get a, a recommendation for the right 
um, solution for product. your current setup. Yep. Yeah. Also, I'd like, Mason, thanks for that. I'd like to also let everyone know that the trial keys uh, after the 90 day period can be converted to full licenses at your discount rates offered by connecting up. So, so in, in reality what that means is that there's no need to redeploy any new licensing. Uh, it's simply uh, you've already done the work of installing it under the trial situation and then that will just convert uh, upon payment of the discounted rate to a full license. Which is good news for anybody that's done a deployment of uh, antivirus or any, any sort of uh, software before and uh, do a new version or install it. So yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, a question from David: What about? Um, so you mentioned mobile phones before. What about iOS and Android portable devices, and how can they be protected? Okay, yeah, Android is is definitely um, where we. Focusing our, our the efforts of, of ESET, ESET engineers are focusing on Android products. The iOS, we haven't seen the iOS um, come out with any issues. I know that sounds just like Mac of old, but it's because it's closed source. Um, yeah, ESET have not uh, produced a, an iOS. I don't think any AV vendors have at this point actually. No, I'm, I'm not aware of one. Or they might claim or say say there's something, but um, yeah, it's pretty pretty good. Yeah. Um, so another question from David. Just presume the same problems uh, that occur with Office 365 and security uh, will apply with Google for nonprofits. So G Suite, historically Google Apps. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. It, it, it's just a fact of life that a, AV protection uh, from the stronger focused security companies is, is still it's very, very necessary. Um, trusted applications have security uh, problems. Uh, it's just a fact of life. It's going to continue. Yep. Cool. I've just got one more question currently. So if anybody has any other questions, uh, please put them in now. It's your opportunity to have them answered by Mark. Uh, so question, can we, uh, so somebody's just asking for the link for the AV website. Well, suggest you can just go to um, if to, to look at the background of ESET. Um, but we will send the links directly to the discounted products, the free trial Mark mentioned uh, on the connecting up. Uh, side, as well as the slides and recording. So uh, we'll send you all the resources we can and, and point you in the right direction so you can uh, make an informed choice and um, hopefully yeah, take advantage of the free trial offer, which is a fantastic one. So unless any other questions come through in the next few seconds, Mark, do you have a anything else that's popped up that you'd like to cover or uh, happy with what we've covered off uh, today? Look, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with how we've, uh, how you've handled things with us, Nathan, and, and the information that we've um, put out I hope is helpful for everybody. I'd like to just stress that the support for all the ESET products is local. It's, um, it, they have a full support team and I mean also uh, Micro themselves can be contacted. We're very proactive, and uh, you'll never be found waiting for support with these set products. Cool. Um, now we've actually just had a good question uh, from Matthew. Thank you, Matthew, for putting that in. So, in the three-part network diagram showed earlier, um, it's just asking for an elaboration on the threats targeting server infrastructure specifically, uh, which and wasn't uh, elaboration on. Can, uh, how can these be identified and addressed uh, in the absence of a comprehensive antivirus package? Yeah, that might be one that we could take offline. If you could um, send that one through to us, uh, and we could contact Matthew uh, directly with an answer to that one. Yep, cool. Not not a problem at all. And um, 
yeah, we, we, any other technical questions? Um, so I'll give an email address in a moment. Uh, so if anyone else has questions of uh, that nature or anything specific technical, uh, we'll endeavour to answer that as well. Uh, so thank you very much, Mark, and thank you for everyone for joining us. I hope you enjoy the presentation and you learnt a lot from it. Uh, as mentioned a couple of times, you'll receive a link to the recording of today's webinar in the next couple of days, uh, as well as a copy of the slides, and from then you'll be able to access it any time on our website as well. If you have any questions that come to mind later on, please feel free to send them uh, through to me at marketing at connectingup.org or marketing at techsoup.net.nz and I'll forward them through to Mark and the ESET and micro team. If you have any feedback, please feel free to send that through as well. So that concludes today's webinar. Thank you again for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. And see you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much.